Anyway, this really this really interesting article popped up. Um, it's on DJ Mag and it's titled "We Need to End uh, um, Controller Snobbery," which kind of you know hits home for me because I, I play with the controller when I'm at a pub here in Westfield and Stratford for the most part every Friday, and then when I go and play in bars and clubs, I usually use um, their CDJs right and a USB drive, whatever. So I've been able. It's been quite good for me because. I've been able to practice quite often in a club setting, play with club a club setup, and I've also been able to do my own DJ thing at home with a controller, which is always handy. Because again, you know, to be able to afford a full kind of you know proper proper setup DJ setup would cost a lot of money, and I don't really have that at the moment. Um, um, a proper like you know CDJs, that, no, I think each CDJ two thousand, the proper ones with the USB are like a thousand one hundred, maybe a half fifteen hundred each, or whatever. So you know, take a while for me to get that sort of thing. So. Um, DJ controls for always have always been a really always held a really special place in my heart because it allowed me to play music out loud. It allowed me to go play in places, get paid, get be able to play in gigs, and also allowed me to practice. And when I go to on a full DJ self, even though it's not the same thing, I still have the same sort of kind of I, I can practice my timing right. I can I can beat match. All you can all you need to do is take off the kind of the 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 waveforms on the on the laptop you got saying you can take those off and disable them so you can learn to beat match and stuff so there's things that you can learn playing on a controller that will help you playing in the dj world but um a weird thing happened i don't know when it happened i think maybe because of the influx of dj controllers at the time i think there was a period when um maybe a couple of years ago when all the budget dj controllers were coming out new mark were kind of crushing it and bringing out loads of dj controls all the time really poor quality for the most part and i think pioneer hadn't really made any strides in that kind of um segment segment uh sector just yet especially in the budget controller way and it always seemed this bit like a toy kind of hobby thing it never really was taken that seriously but i think over the years because the higher end stuff the cdjs has gotten more expensive right like i said mentioned before like you know even the djm 200 mixer it's like 250 right the the, the mixer that um the pioneer mixer that they make that kind of you can plug into uh, usb drive and shit they're quite expensive so i think the fact that they've gone up i think the fact that um dj controllers of dj cdjs have gone up in price over the years and have gotten more sophisticated um has then made um the entry level dj controllers a bit more covetable because djs out there who kind of just want to practice and just want to have something to play with at home are having to buy these little controllers just to kind of have something just to kind of run through tunes play things see how they are see how they sound out loud maybe put some cue points and stuff it's just a good thing to have at home and i think for most of the articles i've seen online of djs on the website called freud freud von freuden and maybe other kind of things like on electronic beats i've seen people like you know have interviews inside their apartments and stuff i've always seen I've, i think i've seen a couple of djs have like a setup where they have one deck only and they kind of use that as like something just to play songs out through a monitor or whatever maybe or i've seen them have a controller like i do right um which i have a, a pioneer serato D, i don't know pioneer dj something whatever so um the snobbery is kind of ended i thought but this kind of article kind of speaks on what happened and how it kind of uh, transpired this is an article from dj mag got up in the screen um we need to in and dj snobbery and it says the following da -da -da -da. zoom in a little bit here it's on your screen yet. Yeah. Zoom in a little bit there. Let's zoom in. Picture the scene. You're wrapping up an incredible set. Outstretched arms are begging for sweaty high fives from the uh, packed dance floor. You're plus ones, grinning wildly, eyes darting from left to right, making sure everyone knows that they came with you. Lavender scented towel in hand, as requested, the floor, the club, nay, the world is yours. As you roll into the final mix, a perfect blend, of course, the next DJ has entered the booth. Fine, I guess. Reaching over your mixer, they inspect the ins and outs of the garnish with a garish iPhone light, ruining the sacred booth vibe which one can use which one can i use they screech they screech over the ear bleeding monitor that's when you spot it your heart sinks your face contort this is a controller some kind of plastic device you don't catch the make i'm willing to even acknowledge the culture travesty um you do a 100 wet you know 100 wet reverb effect raise your hands to applaud yourself and quickly squeeze out the booth to the green room a wedding flock of hanger along follow fuck that it's a sorry tale that djs who would have taken a controller to the club are all too familiar with the looks and the tone they're discussed. Apart from the fact that it's slightly more inconvenient when somebody reaches over to swap out an RCA cable mid-set, surely controller DJs don't deserve this. We're not talking about complex hybrid live setups like the one Richie Lords or Dubfire use. We're talking about the simple two or four channel devices that mimic a simple mixing environment. Text and the snobbery is old as tech itself, from Mac to PC to iPhone to Android to Fender to Gibson to FL to Pro Studio to Virtual Studio to Tractor. There's always been a level of alliance. Um, often dictated by whoever, wh wh whatever genre congregation you found yourself in. But when it comes to controllers and by associating laptops, there's more of a story than b blind allegiance, which is true, right? Because I think the issue with controllers 
isn't that it's not the iron for an android sort of thing because i think with the controllers and cdj is the issue with it or usb drives you know that kind of battle which is interesting how that's kind of shaped up over the years isn't it i remember back in the day like if you didn't come in a booth with a, a little flip you know what i used to do actually back in the day this is a kind of confession i used to bring my controller with me but i used to also bring my cds so I'd bring a, my little wallet of CDs with me when I used to play back in the day and I'd kind of flick through my CDs and I'd have like three or four tunes I can play straight away. And then once the, the other DJs out of the booth or they've kind of gave way, I then bring out my controller and plug that in mid-set. Again, super stupid and a lot more stressed than need be. But I just didn't want that awkwardness or that kind of look down snobbery of like, he's using a controller. So I'd have, kind of have to do that. Anyway, the cost of entry to DJ industry standard has always been high. A pair of 1210s and a com competent two-channel mixer have, have, was always out of budget. It's true, isn't it, right? Just as the 5,000 plus you'd have to spend on a pair of CDJ uh, NX, NX's 2s and a DJM 900 mixer. Yeah, Jesus Christ. That's the industry standard. It's five grand. Fucking hell. You may be on a part-time job and pocket money of a young dance music fan who wants to DJ, get to DJ. This is true. Do a lot of DJs work part-time? I don't work fucking full-time, mate, and just try and work around it. There's not enough money to work in part-time. I guess, for the most part, you work part-time because you want to dedicate all your time. Because I think if I work part-time, you'd have to be uploading mixes every day. That's one thing I've noticed, too. There's not a lot of DJs that actually upload mixes quite a lot, is it? Except for the kind of music lot, there's not a lot of DJs that actually upload mixes regularly all the time. The kind of music lot always upload mixes. Like they always do radio shows and stuff. Adam Port's always kind of uploading stuff. But for the most part, DJs don't really upload. I guess if you're professional and you're already getting your book booked already, you don't really need to kind of um, solicit more more gigs. But I think, especially for myself, I'm kind of always kicking myself because I don't upload as many mixes as I should do. I should be uploading all the time, maybe every week. But anyway, um, it's way beyond a part time job and pocket money of a young dance music fan who wants to get into DJing. Um, of course there's a fucking hallowed turf there such a beautiful device and i fucking love it um so where do you start with with what what, what can you afford and a piece of a crack dj no so where do you start with what can you afford a piece of crack dj software don't do that um which is true i i, I buy mine now crack software is fucking shit never works well for me anyway um and it's, i think it's like nine pound a month or something i think if i buy it outright it's a bit more cheaper um are there ambitious are ambitious are there ambitious less less value less valid sorry Speak to any DJ who started in, in the age of vinyl and they'll tell you the crappy belt drive um, turntable that they had, which is the same thing I have, a Newmark one, right? Belonged to their parents, they learned to mix on, and the cassette deck they blended tapes on um, in their host family's basement in Seattle. Uh, the late 80s. Okay, that's um, just Chris Liebling. As we hear these stories, um, there's a romanticism, a dedication, a drive to overcome the technical and financial barriers to express themselves and thrive to excel as DJ against the odds. Sorry there, um, that was offensive, but controllers are inept. Not to mention that the creative connection we make with our with our equipment. There's a reason tech riders exist, and that's not just for convenience. Um, we develop muscle memory, a deep bond, and a familiarity in an unfamiliar setting. Whether it's an established DJ hoping for hopping from city to city, or a DJ playing uh, their first set in a jacked club. Uh, for controller users, there's often shamed into making a transition to cdjs or equivalent equipment they've only ever seen or touched while hundreds of thousands of people are standing in front of them they're very nuanced more move translated through a ten thousand pound sound system no pressure of course um it got much better in front in recent times to facilitate this transition pioneer dj's introduction of record box somewhat eases the move to home to booth meaning all the familiar cue points loop points and playlists are mirrored in the, in the fancy setup even pioneer dj's more affordable controller attempts to mimic the layout of the flagship nx2 which is true all of that is goes over the fact that cdj's and equivalent of control are not controller purpose-built units playing digital files controlling this book os try and actually use a smartphone and the controller to dj though and see what looks get who you get because the console the cdj and everything else uh, anyway the control the article continues it's a really good article i recommend you check it out my forced opinions on it are as follows right i think in the beginning when i started to dj um there was this idea that um the equipment was what made you right equipment was best and i think i was it kind of mimicked the youtube era where everyone kept asking about people's cameras right so that was the era when every vlogger i think it still happens now i'm not really sure i don't really watch vlogs that much but every vlogger back in the day um um on youtube when you have make a youtube channel you've got your default upload i think a uh, description thing like sitting underneath the video so you can kind of uh write the you know you have your your default things you want to write like your social media links whatever it may be called right I remember most vloggers used to have like a breakdown of what equipment they'd use, oh, what camera I use, because oh, it was the kind of constant question you get all the time. 
And there was this thinking, I don't know why, but there was a thinking behind people that were creating and people that were watching that the camera was what made those stories interesting. It was what made the vlog interesting. Um, the equipment they used is what made this DJ the best, right? What mixer is that? What's that? What's that effects thing? And then I think over time, I'm not sure why it happened uh, exactly, what the, what the cultural shift was, but it actually changed and it kind of felt, it kind of evolved into the era of selectors, right? So we're seeing DJs more of like, it doesn't matter what they play or how they mix. It's actually the tunes that they play. No, sorry, it's, it's not how they mix or what equipment they use. It's the tunes that they play at a given specific time. And that's where I've, maybe I kind of started falling in love with DJ Harvey and Ricardo Villalobos. Um, those are kind of DJ, or even a Seth Truckster, who at the time people would just say he wasn't the most technically proficient DJ, but he had such an eclectic and great taste in music, right? Because of his history uh, growing up in Detroit, work, working in a record store. His parents have got musical background. He's been making, he's been DJing for, you know, umpteen years. He started really, really young. Um, so he, they just had a different kind of way of interpreting records. Eh? Uh, ben UFO is another good example. Um, uh, Scream is another one. Maybe he's a, you know, because he's a professional DJ too, but people that were selectors more so. And then I think with that also came the, uh, also came, it, it paralleled, you know, the cost of CDJs going, rocketing up, right? They skyrocketed now. Now, you know, an NX, a, a Pioneer CDJ NX2 is like, I don't know, two grand plus, whatever it may be. So then when those, um, when that kind of happened, I think Pioneer and those other established brands kind of saw a gap in the market for DJs who were established. But just didn't want to spend that much amount of money on a CDJ. And now you have those um, RX units, right? Which are like 1500. They kind of um, are a big controller with like two CDJs um, attached to it. And then and then you have the level that I have just below it, which is a Pioneer CD controller. Has all the elements that you're familiar with with a Pioneer setup. But it's just in a more compact unit. and But it's got a kind of robust um, a professional feel that you expect from Pioneer. And they've kind of aimed that towards, of course, bedroom DJs. But more so for DJs just want to practice at home. And I think for the most part, the customers too have also realized that it doesn't really matter what the person plays with, as long as they kind of rock the club, everyone's down with it. I don't really, I don't really see as many chin strokes as I used to see back in the day. Before you would go to a club and you'd see a whole bevy of men, usually men just standing on the side of the walls, like just, you know, my, uh, dancing minimally, but more so critiquing the DJ's mix. So, so much so there'll be someone da dancing right at the front of the booth, just staring at the DJ and looking at how they play, how they mix, like left and right, like looking what knobs they move around. Really bizarre for me, isn't it? Because obviously I've grown, I would cast myself as a club kid, right? I actually go clubbing, like I'm considering, I'm even considering going to Berlin, I think at the end of June, to go to the Bergheim and go see some DJs play. Like I'm an actual club kid, I go and see DJs play, I don't care where the DJ is, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bothered about going to the, near the booth, I just want to dance and have a good time and, and fucking enjoy myself, I don't care about and all of that kind of like, you know, standing right in front of the booth shit. So I never really got that idea, but it does exist. But I think now there's overall, it's kind of got better and people are a little bit more understanding that the equipment isn't the issue, it's how kind of people conduct themselves. Now, of course, that whole transition, when you when DJ's playing their last song and you're coming in, there is etiquette that goes with it, right? I remember um, DJ Non-Compliant talking about it on an RA podcast where you kind of, you know, it's a kind of faux pas to kind of go into the booth and mix the other song. You don't need to do that. Just let the song play out. Um you know, transition that way properly, let it end properly. I think that's that's the kind of Berlin way that I've kind of learned, right? Of the actually letting that tune play out, clapping for the person, and then have and then you start in refresh. I think it's nice too for the crowd. I think there was this idea that the crowd you can't have it silent, right? Let's come and No, it's alright to be silent. They know they know I'm starting. It's alright to start again. They know I'm starting. A new person. They're not gonna suddenly now go home. They know it's another person coming. They see me. I'm setting up. I'm another person. I'm new. I gave you a hug. They can see that I'm another DJ coming in. It's okay to kind of let it let it kind of simmer down and start again. But I think overall, I've, I think I've really, I think I've shown, especially with the stuff that I've been doing, with playing in this pub that I'm playing in Westfield Tapis. Come next week, I'm playing there, April twelfth. Um, I've kind of given myself a challenge to not use the equipment just as like a play, pause and play um, a gizmo. I kind of push myself when I'm using a controller because it's easier to use because I've got a laptop, I've got like a screen, a big interface I can use. There's, there's loads of cheat codes because it's an automatic loop function with um, two bar, four bar, six bar, eight bar loops already there. So I try to use the, I try to stretch the capability. I don't just try and mix like left and right, left and right, right, left, right, left. I try to stretch as much as I can so that I can get creative with that. So the hope is that when I then go and use CDJs in a nightclub, I can then bring that same creativity to that kind of platform. But I want to try and stretch the possibilities of that kind of little controller so that people listening can see, ah, oh, he's just standing there pausing and playing. Because that's the annoying thing about it when people just, you know, they have their Serato face staring at the screen. I'm, I just want to have my playlist ready. Like I do, I do stuff that probably a lot of DJs don't do when they use controllers. I prepare a playlist. 
I put crates together. Um, I, I separate my tunes. Out. I know I'm going to play maybe the first half an hour and then the rest of it I freestyle. I don't look at the screen too often. I play what's on the fucking um, controller base. Like those are little things that I kind of use in order to kind of give myself a little bit more of an edge of the people that use it um, by and large. But I think by and large, I think that snobbery has ended. I think if you're a DJ out there, I think you should mostly concentrate on your selection and making sure that you've got like a really interesting, you've got a really interesting thing to say for your music. I think for the most part, that's what's made me a fan of DJs when I go, for instance, I always talk about them all the time, but I've mention him again dr rubenstein and roy perez uh, they're one of my recent dj discoveries and why i'm a big fan of them is that like, because they're just full of surprises right they've cut, they've got their own little flavor of how they play um it's a particular sort of vibe um I, i'll take it similar to like a solomon right that's what, the reason why people love solomon because his personality seeps through his dj set you know exactly his him right it's a very particular way of playing and i fucking love it and that's something i kind of want to do going forward um yeah so that's my point on these i think again these nobody is fucking prophetic anyway i think in general good djs are good djs regardless of what they use um same with the camera thing it doesn't really matter what camera you use good storyteller is a good storyteller and that's it because i'm actually telling a good story people that actually telling a story people give a shit about and then the rest will sort of kind of 